this example, we're going to learn how to calculate the mode of a distribution for a variable that is non-orderable and discrete. The variable I've selected here is taken from the 2012 General Social Survey, and it asks people their religious preference. You can see up top that the possible responses are Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, and none. From the information given in this slide, there's three ways that we can figure out the modal category. Let's look at the graphic at the bottom first. We can simply look at the height of the bars of this bar chart and select the category that has the tallest bar, in this case the Protestants, and conclude that Protestant is our modal category. Remember that the mode is a measure of central tendency, meaning typical value. And you can see, because the bar is the tallest, that it is one of the most typical values by that particular definition. Looking at the top of this slide, you can see there's two other ways that we can determine the mode. First, we can look at the column labeled FREQ, or frequency, and simply select the category that has the greatest number of cases. In this case, there are 916 Protestant respondents, which again exceeds all of the other categories. Finally, and my preferred method, is to look at the percentage column. I just find this a little bit easier. And take the number that is the highest value, in this case 51.61%, and look across and read the modal category, Protestant. So those three methods allow you to pick the category that is most frequently occurring. Because this variable is non-orderable and discrete, we're not assigning a numerical value to the mode. For example, in the data set, Protestants are coded 1, Catholics are coded 2, Jews are coded 3, and nuns are coded 4. However, it doesn't make sense to say the modal category is 1. For non-orderable discrete variables, we use the category, the variable label. We're also going to calculate the mode in this example. The difference between this example and the other mode example is that this variable happens to be an orderable discrete measure. In 2012, general social survey respondents were asked about how many children they had. You can see possible values range from zero to as high as eight or more. Again, underlying both those numbers in that final category are actual numbers. So when it says eight or more, understand that the computer sees the value of eight. It's important to remember this if you were to calculate some other statistic like the arithmetic average, because eights would be averaged in and would be basically losing information about the families with 9 or 10 or 12 children. We can calculate the mode in the same way we did in the example before. So looking at the graphic at the bottom, we can see that the tallest column is the column labeled 2. That is to say, respondents who had two children are average using the definition of the mode as the most frequently, frequently occurring category. Now one thing I'd like to note in this particular example is that there's really two modes here. There's a mode of 0 and a mode of 2. And yes, I know that those columns are slightly different from each other, so technically 2 is actually the mode because it's taller than the 0, but they're very close to each other. Looking at the table at the top, we can see that the category labeled 2 has 28.87% of all the respondents in it. So this is technically the mode because that's the largest value. On the other hand, the value labeled 0 has 27.19%. Now obviously, being within one or two percentage points of each other, these are very similar categories. And in some sense, this is what's called a bimodal distribution. And it's always good to look at the frequency histogram or a bar graph to look for one or two or multi-modes. I decided to break this example down and make it a little more refined. We can see here that when I've taken that number of children variable and broken it out by people who are married and people who are who have never been married or not currently married have never been married, we can see the mode changes quite a bit. And that explains the bimodal nature of the entire distribution. For example, looking at the graphic on the right, the people who are never married, the mode is 0. Looking at the graphic on the left, people who are married, the mode is 2. When we put all those people together into the same group, in the same sample, those become our two different modes. Separating them out gives us a little more information and a little more detail if we were telling a story about children and people in 2012. Thank you.